Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is slightly different. I actually wanted to gesso over my sketchbook cover and kind of make it my own. So right now I'm just layering the gesso and sanding between it just to make it smooth and to give a good surface for painting. So I'm actually trying to do a different uh, type of style today, kind of a landscape but with some characters in it. Like the characters aren't detailed at all, they're just like little sprites, they're generic sprites, but I still wanted to kind of blend uh, a group of things with a background. So I knew I wanted to have a pool, uh, a, a pond of water, some lilies on the pond, cattails, and I also knew that I wanted it to be a sunrise scene. Um, I kind of wanted it to be so that there would be something interesting to look at on both sides of the sketchbook. It would be con it would be a whole image if you looked at both halves, but it would still make sense if you only saw one side of it. So I actually went in with yellow for right around the sun. I actually was using several reference images of a sunrise for this. Uh, the thing is, is that with a painting, and if you want something to be luminous, less contrast will make it look brighter. So having a really light yellow right around the sun actually helps it to make it look like it's shining rather than just a white dot on an otherwise not luminous background. So I'm being very careful to make sure that the lake mirrors uh, the sky in this uh, part of the lake, but then on the other side that's on the front of the sketchbook I wanted it to be a little bit more of just a plain blue lake with some ripples So now I'm just going in with some purple to lay out the background mountains I knew that I wanted to have some uh, majestic purple mountains uh, the purple would also complement the yellow of the sun, so I, I knew that I really wanted to have a purple landscape. I'm actually able to do uh, longer videos now because I actually got a bigger SD card and that also means I'm able to take higher quality footage so I, I was actually able to show a painting this time other than like my normal speed paints because those take a little bit less time to do they're still involved but it's not like a painting that takes a lot of time to dry and to mix the colors and so I, I'm really happy that I'm finally able to show stuff like this on my channel. So I, I took a lot of inspiration from Bob Ross for this one, especially with the mountains. I'm nowhere near as good as he is, uh, but I still was really inspired by watching his videos. Uh, actually, a fun fact about the gray in the clouds, I actually mixed blue with orange to get that gray and I also added a little bit of pink to the clouds because my favorite thing when watching the sunrise is being able to see the pink glow on the clouds. I think that's gorgeous. Not just because my favorite color is pink but because it's just an amazing thing to see. Uh, so now I'm going in with white just to because okay so when you're like coloring over when you're painting over colors in acrylics, it's not completely opaque all the time, especially when you're using oranges and reds. So I put a layer of white for the mid-ground. One, so that I know where to put the paint and I'm not just guessing as to where I want things to go, but also because I wanted to make the colors more vibrant instead of having them look washed out. So I took extra care to make sure that everything looked reflected in the pond and it wasn't just a, a weird... Because it's hard to do reflections that actually look like reflections. So that was one of the challenges of this drawing. 
So now I'm going in and adding the initial colors. I, I kind of wanted to use an entire rainbow in this, but have it look conducive to everything else. So I decided to paint it as if the trees were just barely changing into fall colors. Um, that's also one of my favorite things at the end of summer, whenever green trees have red leaves because they're just in the process of turning into complete fall trees. It's just, that's another like really cool phenomenon that happens like every year. Um, so throughout, as, as I'm painting this, uh, I constantly go back in with pure purple as a like kind of color. I, I go back in adding purple to the trees as the shadow not only does this make it very um, dark without adding black but it also ties it back in with the purple mountains so I really enjoyed adding the purple to the leaves it just, it just also makes it more luminescent um, to see the dap of light hitting the trees because as I mentioned when I was uh, painting the Sun uh, a lack of contrast where it's light will create a luminous effect, but if you want to show an object that's getting hit by strong light, contrast is key. So I added a lot of contrast to the trees. So for the brown, I actually mixed red with the same purple that I've been using for the background and the shadows with a little bit of burnt umber so I think it make it made a it made a really rich brown instead of just taking it right out of the tube in fact none of the colors that I used were right out of the tube and I think if you you can see the kind of makeshift palette that I have uh, it's just a plastic lid but uh, it works and I just mix all the colors and because it's a lid I can just close the container on top and like keep my paints dry while they're drying on the canvas so I think that's really a good art hack to uh, do a palette that's inside of a container so that you can just seal it up and you don't waste paint so now I'm, I'm just adding in the dirt Kind of like the edge of the pond dirt. Uh, very soggy dirt. But uh, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite parts was uh, making this grass. It's like long grass, but I, I really enjoyed uh, making the grass and just, it was just so pretty because I kept on adding a little bit of darker green to it as I went on. And it just created such a beautiful effect, kind of reminiscent of Miyazaki. I also added some cattails, but the camera cut out. Um, now I'm adding the foreground elements. Um, going over with white again just to make them more vibrant. So I'm doing the lily pads, the edge of the water, and just adding in a few of the willow branches because I actually wanted it to be a kind of tree in the middle of the sketchbook so that the spiral bound like edge would make sense in making it like a tree trunk, I think. At least that was my interpretation, but I'm just adding um, green. I think it helps to add a little more green to the water just because it balances out the other green in the image. Last but not least, I added in the sprites. So first I went in, I added like the little glow that they have around them. Then I took off the center tape and I'm adding the tree. I'm actually decided to make the tree uh, silver because it's like a willow bark, but it's also like a magical tree. But I just went in with a silver oil based Sharpie. Uh, and now I'm just adding the bay. So, so one is looking at the one that's on the water, the one on the water is trying to pull up a lily out of the water. Um, the, the two on the front of the sketchbook are like looking at the sunrise and there's actually two small ones like in the back that are just like dancing together or something. 
then there's one leaning against a tree. So then I just added a little blue tinge to the fairies and I thought that was really cute. But then I actually had to go to a D&D session. So this is actually recorded afterwards. So I just added a little more detail when I got home. So I added some more elements of like their outfits. So like I added some longer sleeves. Um, I also made, made, made them a little bit more clear as silhouettes. And I just made sure that like you could see the difference between what part of them was clothing and just their overall design was more conducive to being an actual sprite instead of just blank fairies on top of a really good detailed background. So I think it really helped overall. Yeah, it was really fun to paint this, and I think it really made my sketchbook a little bit sturdier. Um, it made it definitely made both the covers thicker. Um, yeah, there's also some other things in the works. Uh, I got a couple collaborations coming up, and uh, I'm getting ready to go to New York, so get ready for a lot of videos because there's also Zutara week coming up that I'm going to participate in on my YouTube channel, so seven whole days of videos. Uh, after that, my schedule is actually going to change a little bit, but uh, this was just a fun project and I really like how it turned out and it just looks nice on both sides and it's just, I really had a lot of fun making this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. There's links to my social media and Etsy shop in the description. And I'll see you next time. Bye.